Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another hey! moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Hey guys, don't forget to put on some sun protection before you go outside. Okay, Mom. Oh, wow. What do we use? Well, to understand that, first we need to understand why we need it. Small doses of sunlight, 10 to 15 minutes, three to four times a week, is actually beneficial to humans as it helps us produce vitamin D, which strengthens our bones, improves our immune system, and may even help protect us against some forms of cancer. Any more than that, and we need some form of sun protection. We use sunscreens and sunblocks to protect us against ultraviolet or UV rays produced by the sun, specifically UVA and UVB rays, too much of which can damage your skin and contribute to skin cancer. But I thought getting a suntan was healthy. No, and it doesn't matter if it comes from the sun or a salon. According to the World Health Organization, there is no such thing as a healthy tan. A suntan is nothing but a sign that your skin has been damaged by UV rays and has attempted to protect itself. So whenever you're gonna spend a long time outdoors, you should use something on any exposed skin that protects you from both UVA and UVB rays. But what makes these different? Well, for both sunscreens and sunblocks, there are two basic categories, mineral and chemical. Chemical sunscreens, like these products, all use a substance that is absorbed into the skin and reacts to the UV rays, preventing them from causing skin damage. Mineral sunblocks, like zinc oxide, provide a physical barrier between your skin and the sun, literally blocking UV rays from being able to penetrate into the skin. Um, I'd really rather not go walking around looking like a ghost. Is there another option? Well, actually, nanotechnology does offer another option clear mineral sunblock. This is a meter stick, and these little lines are millimeters, thousandths of a meter. Wait, I've heard this part. If we were to divide the space between two of these lines into a million parts, that would be a nanometer, a billionth of a meter. Yeah, and when we talk about nanotechnology or nanoscale science, we're talking about particles of matter nanometers in size. And when things get that small, they start to behave differently. I guess they have been watching. Let's look at this a little closer. Remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. We're going to compare normal and nano-based sunblocks. For this, you'll need both nano and non-nano sunblocks, some black paper, and some cotton swabs. First, place a small amount of each of the sunblocks onto a piece of paper. Then, rub them into the paper and watch what happens. In normal mineral sunblock, like this zinc oxide, the particles are small but larger than the nanoscale. So when it is smeared on, you see the white of the larger particles. But this titanium dioxide sunscreen, which uses nano-sized particles, goes on clear because the particles are so small they no longer appear white. But if you can't see it, how do you know it works? Easy. You test it. This is a UV meter. It gives us a relative reading of the amount of UV rays present, also known as a UV index. Right now, it's reading a measurement of eight. These cups have normal and nanoparticle sized sunblocks applied to them. If we use the UV meter under each, we see both block UV rays. The size of the nanoparticles, while so small that they don't reflect visual light, are still big enough to block UV light. So what happens when these nanoparticles get on my skin? Most tests indicate that nano-sized particles don't penetrate that deep into your skin, so you should be safe. But those tests were done with healthy adult skin. We don't know the effects on younger or older skin, which is often thinner, or on cuts or other damaged skin. But whether or not you use nano-sized sunblock, the most important thing to keep in mind and that all dermatologists agree with is that you need to use an SPF of 30 or higher. I hear about SPF all the time. What is it? Well, SPF stands for Skin Protection Factor. It tells you how much UV radiation it protects you against. Wait, so if I wear this SPF of 100, can I go the whole day without more? No, SPF is not a time factor. It merely measures how much UV radiation gets blocked. 
Chemical sunscreens degrade pretty quickly, so you need to reapply at least every one to two hours, more often if you're swimming or wiping off sweat. Even mineral sunblocks, whether or not they have nanoparticles, should be reapplied regularly to ensure their strength. So what do we use? We know doctors recommend an SPF of 30, but do we use mineral, chemical, nano? I can't tell you that. It differs from person to person depending upon fairness of skin, their health, their age, their comfort levels, their personal values. What I can do is give you the facts and encourage you to find out more. But really, it's up to you and you to make your own decisions. This has been another Oh Wow Moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play. Thank you.